Let me close with a terrible story about a little boy who understood why we can't wait any longer. James Darby, nine-year-old from New Orleans, wrote me on April the 29th. Hey, Mr. Hey, chill, 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 Dear Mr. Clinton, I want you to stop the killing in the city. People is dead, and I think that somebody might kill me. So would you please stop the people from deading? I'm asking you nicely to stop it. I know you can do it. Do it. I know you could. Your friend, James. The James Darby story is not just an African-American tragedy, it's an American tragedy. It's a story of this nine-year-old boy who was living in New Orleans in the 13th Ward. Night after night, day after day, he was experiencing the chaos around him. What made James's story so unique of all the kids who had been killed in inner cities was that James had written a letter to the President of the United States nine days prior to his death. Written within the letter was a prophecy of his own death. And James Darby wrote his president a letter because he was so afraid only to lose his life walking home before anybody could erase his fears. Mother's Day his letter would prove to be true. As James and his family enjoyed their picnic, 16-year-old Karen Norfleet and her brother, 14-year-old Michael Norfleet, approached the family. They were interested in playing a fun game of touch football. As the day progressed, tensions began to rise and teasing replaced the smiles. Words began to get thrown around. What you tripping off? Better get out my face. Man, that's unnecessary roughness, cuz, you hear me? Who you calling cuz, fool? This ain't no NFL. Bro, who is this clown, man? And why is you even here, bro? That's our point. Y'all ain't got no points now, you heard me? Now the fight was on. What is you doing, cuz? She pregnant, bruh. Man, you gonna get yours. May 1994. Came in from work. Already was a little frustrated. Kicking back, relaxing, or trying to anyway. Then my sister and my brother, they walks in. And face, full eyes, basically shut tells me about this little family fight they got into. I let anger take over. Also in the house is 34-year-old James Walker, a convicted felon. He urges Joseph to take revenge in his sister's honor. Don't never let somebody speak to your sister like that, ever. So I grabbed the gun. Yeah, we're going to deal with this one right now, you heard me? Come on, y'all. Not you, care. You stay there. We jumped in the car, and there we were. We was out. Never intentionally aiming at anyone specific. Joseph was the oldest son and technically the man of the house. Feeling the need to protect his sister's honor, and because he looked up to James Walker, he didn't want to let anyone down. As the three men pulled closer to the park, Joseph sees the family walking. I fired one shot. Hey! Payback! When you wake up in the morning, do you remember what you did right away? Does it come right back to your mind? Every day. Every morning. It's not a day I live and wake up in this place that I don't remember and think about what happened then. Dear Mr. Clinton, 
I want you to stop the killing in the city. People is dead, and I think that somebody might kill me. So would you please stop the people from deading? I'm asking you nicely to stop it. I know you can do it. Do it. I know you could. Your friend, James.